You're listening to The Philosopher's Note on the Silva Mind Control Method of Mental Dynamics. More wisdom in less time. Hi, this is Brian. Welcome to The Philosopher's Notes on the Silva Mind Control Method of Mental Dynamics. The subtitle is, You Can Unleash the Power of Your Mind to Solve Any Problem, by Jose Silva and Bert Goldman. Great little book. We'll start with a quote. This philosophy is about enjoying things you like, avoiding or changing things you do not like, and accepting what you cannot avoid or change by the skillful use of your viewpoint. That's from Jose Silva and Bert Goldman from the Silva Mind Control Method of Mental Dynamics. Quite a title, huh? All right. This is a phenomenal book. I found it randomly while staying at a friend's house in Bali and loved it. It's a quick reading 250 pages and is among the most densely packed with wisdom books out there, in my opinion. Deepak Chopra's Seven Spiritual Laws of Success still holds the record in my book. Uh, In this note, we'll touch on several of my favorite big ideas, and if you're digging it, I highly recommend you check it out for more ideas on how to control your mind through visualization while changing your thoughts to live a happier, more fulfilled, and stress-free life. For now, let's talk about your brain. So the first big idea is your brain waves. Quote, stress causes a faster brain wave than does relaxation, end quote. So brain waves are seriously cool. I've always been fascinated by the whole idea that our brain waves are different depending on what we're doing, sleeping, meditating, working, etc. And although I knew the names of the different states, delta, theta, alpha, and beta, I didn't have a good sense of what it all meant and how I could consciously affect my brain waves. That is until I read this book. It's one of the best, easiest ways to understand uh, how your brain waves function. All right, so here's the deal. Scientists can measure your brain using what's called an EEG, which is short for an electroencephalogram. Now, this handy little device measures the speed of your brain waves in cycles per second, or CPS. The range is pretty broad. From the half cycles per second of someone in deep, deep, deep delta sleep to the 85 cycles per second of someone having an epileptic seizure. Now, the normal higher end is closer to about 40 cycles per second. All right. So in the different states, um, we have different qualities. And in the note, you can see a little chart I have, which neatly organizes what I'm going to share with you right now. But in delta, which is about a half cycle per second to four cycles per second, you're in deep unconscious sleep. In theta, which is just above delta, you have brain waves between five and seven cycles per second. You're in deep, comfortable sleep there. In alpha, which is eight to 13 cycles per second, you're in REM sleep, right? Or meditation, and and it's generally the place where restoring your health occurs. And then in beta, that's from 14 cycles per second to 40. You're conscious and you're aware. Now, if you're over 21 cycles per second, you're in stress or anxiety. If you're less than 19 cycles per second, that's where genius creativity exists. So you want to get there. You want to bring yourself out of stress, slow down your brain waves, right, consciously. We're going to talk about that. So there's a lot of fascinating stuff we can get out of this. First, know that the higher our brain wave cycles per second, the more agitated we are. We're stressed any time our cycles per second goes over 21. And knowing this, we obviously want to avoid hanging out at greater than 21 cycles per second, right? Now, how do we do that? We start by recognizing the fact that there's an absolute correlation between how quickly our brain is moving, as measured by our CPS, and how quickly our thoughts are jumping around, and how much agitation and inability to focus and stress we're experiencing. So how do we slow our brains down? Silva and Goldman present a simple, brilliant way to slow down and get to alpha quickly and easily. Here's the quick version. Find a comfortable sitting position. No, you don't need to get into full lotus position like a yogi. Just get comfortable and get your spine nice and straight. 
You can be in a chair if that's easiest for you, or you can be on a meditation cushion if that's your thing. Now close your eyes. Take a deep breath in, and then exhale. Now inhale again, and on the exhale, say silently in your mind, three, three, three. And do another deep inhale. Eyes closed, and on the exhale this time, slowly say two, two, two on the exhale. Then inhale again. And on the exhale, say one, one, one. All right, so the idea is you want to bring yourself down into a more relaxed state of consciousness by focusing your mind on the simple three, 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 and then two, 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 and one, one, one. All right? So if you lose count or you're still totally agitated and you lost count at two, <laughs> then start at 10 and count down from 10. Right? Really work to get yourself calm. And if you repeatedly lose track of where you are, start over again and try imagining a bunch of 10s or 9s coming into your nose on the inhale and out of your nose on the exhale. Or maybe imagine a big old shot clock like what they use in basketball games with a 10 on it, then a 9 all the way down. That's how Wayne Dyer does it. He's actually really into the Silva method. And uh, in one of his books, I forget which one, he mentions how he counts down imagining a shot clock. So anyway, focus on nice, deep breaths and count down from 10 to 1. And you'll slow down your thoughts and slow down your brainwaves and move from beta to alpha. And they say, uh, Jose Silva and Bert Goldman say, how do you know when you've mastered it? Well, you've mastered it when you can take one breath in and exhale and you're an alpha. That's when you know you've arrived. How cool is that? So this whole idea is huge. Again, if we're operating at a, a rate of 21 or greater cycles per second, we're stressed. We're effectively cut off from all creative thinking. We have a hard time focusing on anything. Bring that down to 19 and you've entered the mythical land of the genius. That's the state from which we want to create. They recommend up to three times per day of five to 20 minutes of alpha state meditation. So hanging out in alpha is a brilliant place to imagine our ideal futures. And as we slow down, our stress takes a break and we have the opportunity to tap into our intuition, which if you believe the masters is nothing short of God talking to us. Not only that, but as we master hanging out in Alpha more and more, we'll be giving our body precious time to restore itself to optimal health and helping ourselves truly relax into a deep delta sleep where our body can work its magic on ultimate restoration. So, uh, three, two, one. Ah, welcome to Alpha. All right, so that's a quick look at your brain waves. Really cool stuff. Um, highly recommend you check out some more on that. We're going to talk about it more and more in the future. So here's another big idea. Fear to excitement. Quote, fear is imaginary just as faith is imaginary. And both being imaginary, they are subject to your mental control. So what are you afraid of? Is it public speaking, failing a class, quitting your job and starting a new business, asking someone out, ending a relationship? Whatever it is, know this. Fear is nothing more than a negative expectation. Think about it. When you're afraid, what are you imagining? You're imagining what could go wrong, right? And if you want to get rid of the fear, you've got to swap your negative expectation for a positive one. It really is that simple. Here's some examples. Let's say that your fear is failing a class, right? Now, your negative expectation is you're going to fail the class, look like an idiot, totally waste your time, watch your GPA drop, and have to retake the miserable class again next year. That's your negative expectation. What happens? Enter fear. Now, what if you had a positive expectation? If you had a positive expectation, you'd know that you're going to rock the exams. You're going to pass with flying colors. You're going to really enjoy learning a challenging subject and do the happy dance after you walk out of the final. 
And when you see your report card with your passing grade, enter excitement, right? So there's a negative expectation you can have or a positive expectation. One leads to fear, one leads to excitement. What about starting a business? Now, if you have a negative expectation, you're thinking things like the business is going to fail, you're going to lose all your money and look like a fool. You'll then not be able to feed yourself or your family and never be able to get a job again. Well, guess what? If you have that type of negative expectation, you're going to have a lot of fear. Okay, now you could have the same exact challenge, the same exact opportunity, and have a positive expectation. It would look something like this. The business is going to be an incredible success. You're not only going to succeed in creating a meaningful company that serves the world and circulates a lot of cash, you're going to become a greater person as a result of taking risks and meeting challenges. Yeah. Enter excitement. You have that much positive expectation, you're excited. Again, negative expectation equals fear. Positive expectation equals excitement. How about one more? What about ending a relationship, right? We've all had those challenges. You can have a negative expectation about it, that you're going to break the other person's heart. They're going to tell everyone all your deep, dark secrets. And after the initial clarity of your decision wears off, you'll suddenly realize that you'll never find anyone as cool as your ex. Ah, and then you're going to spend the rest of your life regretting your decision. (laughs) Enter fear. All right. How about if you had a positive expectation? Well, then perhaps you'd imagine having a great conversation with your love, letting them know you care for them deeply, but just don't feel the relationship is serving you any further. You'll both deeply appreciate what you shared together while trusting that you will take what you've learned and manifest an even more amazing relationship in your future. Then excitement has an opportunity to enter the picture. Again, you must create a positive expectation and focus on it as often as possible. While in your alpha state meditation, when you journal, while you're driving to work, talking to friends, etc. Right? So go to alpha state. Imagine what you would be doing if you had no fear. And then watch your fears dissolve. So that's how to turn fear into excitement. Change your expectation. The next big idea is the seven hermetic laws. So the seven hermetic laws are incredibly cool. They're said to be passed down from a fellow named Hermes, three times great. The Greeks called him Hermes, the messenger for the gods. The Romans called him Mercury and pictured him with winged shoes. And the Egyptians recognized him as their god Toth. According to legend, he was a contemporary and even teacher of Abraham. Considered the father of science, his laws capture the essence of life. Super powerful. They are, one, the law of mentalism. The universe is a mental creation of God. Right? So I like to think of this law as describing the power and intelligence that beats my heart, grows my fingernails, and is currently digesting the bowl of yummy quinoa I ate. <laughs> Doing all of this, of course, without me thinking about it. It's truly stunning when you think about it for a moment, huh? This is the same force that grows a lizard's tail and marches the Antarctic penguins to the same mating spot every single year. Hermes calls it the law of mentalism. I like to call it the law of universal intelligence. The second law is the law of correspondence. I'll just read through the laws here so you get an idea, and then I'll go into detail. So the first one is the law of mentalism. The second one is the law of correspondence. Number three is the law of vibration. Number four is the law of polarity. Number five is the law of rhythms. Number six, the law of cause and effect. Number seven, the law of gender. So we'll go into detail on each of those. The law of correspondence says, as above, so below. As below, so above. So have you ever seen a tree with really bad roots and beautiful fruits? It just doesn't happen. How about a really unhappy, angry, negative, pessimistic person with low blood pressure and optimal health? Not going to happen. As above, so below. As inside, so outside. It's the law that captures the essence of the mind-body connection in medicine. The third law is the law of vibration. Quote, all things are in constant and never-ending motion. A change in the vibration causes a change in the manifestation. End quote. 
So did you know that the word Adam means uncuttable? The early scientists named them that because at one point we thought atoms were the absolute smallest particles in the universe. They were uncuttable. Well, now we know better. If you dig a little deeper inside those uncuttable atoms, you'll find things even smaller called quanta. Dig a little deeper and all you're left with is a bunch of vibrating energy. All life is simply vibration. It's fascinating. You can think about it from light. Red is simply a light wave that vibrates slower than blue. You can think about it about sound. Your dog barking is simply a slower vibration than a dog whistle. What about water? Ice is simply H2O vibrating more slowly than water, which is vibrating more slowly than vapor. So if you change the vibration, you change the manifestation. It's fascinating stuff, and it's the basis of the law of attraction and Abraham Hicks and others' wonderful wisdom that we pay attention to our thoughts, which vibrate, and pay attention to our overall vibrational energy. We talk about that more in the couple of notes we have on Abraham Hicks in particular. We have, uh, what do we have? Ask and it is given, and money and the law of attraction done so far. So check those out for a little bit more on the law of attraction and vibration. The next law is the law of polarity. Quote, all things are dual. Everything has its pair of opposites, and these opposites are identical in nature, differing only in degree. So light versus dark, hot versus cold, fear and excitement. All things have their opposites, right? And they're identical in their nature, differing only in degree. So how about light and dark? Both represent the amount of light present from none, which would be dark, to a lot, which would be light. How about hot and cold? Both represent the amount of heat present. From none, which would be cold, to a lot, which would be hot. What about fear and excitement? Again, interestingly, these are opposite ends of the expectation spectrum. From negative expectations of this is going to go terribly, that's fear, to positive expectations of this is going to go great, excitement, right? The law of polarity. Okay, the fifth law is the law of rhythms. All things have their tides, an ebb tide and a flood tide. Rhythms. Think of our and every animal's 24-hour circadian rhythm that follows the sun, right? Or what about a 28-day lunar cycle that also ties to a woman's cycle and the waves of the ocean? Powerful and good stuff to pay attention to, don't you think? Wayne Dyer likes to say, first, be a good animal. And following the remarkably powerful rhythms of the universe is a good way to start being a good animal. My personal favorite change to align with the rhythms, I beat the sun up every morning. Living in the jungles of Bali for several months, it became really obvious that we're meant to get up early and go to bed early. Doubt me? Go camping in the forest for a week and don't bring anything electronic and no alcohol. And then let me know when you're going to bed and getting up on the last day. I bet you it'll be with the sun. <laughs> it's a powerful rhythm. Pay attention to that. That's law number five. Law number six, cause and effect. Quote, every cause has its effect and every effect its cause. So cause and effect. Whether you think of it in the Hindu, Buddhist, yogic terms of karma or Jesus's wisdom that we reap what we sow, it's clear. Every cause has its effect, and every effect its cause. So what does that mean? Well, if you want an apple tree, don't think you're going to get it by planting cucumber seeds. The cause of planting cucumber seeds will never produce the effect of an apple tree. If you want happiness, what do you think? Then think happy thoughts. The cause of planting unhappy thoughts will never produce a happy life. Cause and effect. Very simple, very powerful. So what seeds are you planting right now? All right, and the final law, hermetic law, is number seven, the law of gender. Quote, all things have both a masculine and feminine aspect, end quote. The law of gender, masculine, feminine, all things have a bit of both. Whether we're talking about you and I, our species, or even a conversation. I have feminine qualities. 
I'm open to creative ideas for my intuition. Um, and I also have masculine qualities. I'm driven to set goals and achieve and create. A conversation has masculine, which would be talking, and feminine, which would be listening. Uh, think yin and yang here. It's a good thing to pay attention to and to consciously balance within our lives. Those are the seven hermetic laws. A very quick look at them. Fascinating stuff again. The book goes into more detail on them. And uh, you can Google it too. Fun stuff. All right. The next big idea is the five rules of happiness. This is going to be the final big idea. We just picked a handful of them here. They're really cool. Went into some depth on them. The five rules of happiness. Quote, stress is not caused by problems. It is your attitude toward the problem that causes stress. Knowing the cause of stress makes it easier to deal with. For now, the appropriate question can be asked. The question is not, how can I rid myself of stress, but how can I change my attitude toward work, events, disappointments, fears, and people, end quote. So Silva and Goldman offer perhaps the coolest and simplest and easiest to implement overview of how to be happy I've ever read. I'm not kidding, seriously. All right, so here are the five rules. Quote, number one, if you like something, enjoy it. Number two, if you don't like something, avoid it. Number three, if you don't like something and can't avoid it, change it. Number four, if you can't or choose not to avoid or change something you don't like, then accept it. And number five, you accept something by changing your perception of it. End quote. All right, so first, let's talk about stuff you like. If you like something, enjoy it. It sounds simple, and it is, but too often we like something and then have guilt or shame when we do it. If you like to scuba dive, enjoy it. If you like to wear no underwear, then enjoy it. So how about something you don't like? They give a great example of a student of theirs attending a seminar and leaving for a lunch break to discover that someone had smashed into the bumper of his car, leaving nothing but a big dent. Now, being a good student of the Silva method, he went through these five rules and said to himself, okay, I don't like the fact someone smashed into my car, but I can't avoid it or change it. So I'm going to accept it by changing my perception of it. Now, whereas most people would complain about the episode all through lunch and probably for the next week or so, this guy figured it'd cost about 250 bucks to fix his bumper and that he'd set himself a goal to make three times that amount within the next three months. And rather than complain, he chose to celebrate the fact that someone smashed into his car and gave him the opportunity to set a goal for himself. That's genius. Is that too optimistic for you? Well, how would you respond to an event like that? And why wouldn't you choose, and it's always a choice, how to create the most empowering story out of it? Again, happiness is always a choice. And these rules are a brilliant asset for us to use to create our ideal lives. So let's go back. What about something you don't like that you could avoid? Like a certain person you don't need to see as often as you do. And something you don't like that you can't avoid but could change. Maybe a job or a relationship. And what about something you don't like but can't or choose not to avoid or change? How can you accept it as it is and decide to change your perception about it so it's something that actually makes you happy? Think about each of those questions. Maybe rewind and think about them um, and how you can effectively adapt yourself to each of those different principles of happiness. So it's super powerful stuff. Highly recommend you take some time to think about and journal about those scenarios. And the next time you feel yourself getting a little feisty or unhappy, check in and see where you're breaking one of these rules. And of course, see what you can do to get back in line and get happy. So that is a quick look at the note. Uh, if you liked this note, I think you'll also like The Wheel of Time by Carlos Castaneda. Ask and it is given by Esther and Jerry Hicks and Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Here's a quick little blurb on Jose Silva, really cool guy, and Bert Goldman as well. Um, the authors of The Silva Mind Control Method of Mental Dynamics. So during his lifetime, Jose Silva was a businessman, athlete, artist, educator, scientist, philosopher, and the founder of The Silva Method. 
After starting his business career at the tender age of six, this self-educated man would eventually work his way up and become a well-respected businessman. He established an electronics training school in his hometown community college and designed and received patents for several biofeedback instruments and write over a dozen books that would reach over two dozen countries. He also had an amazing number of kids, something like eight, I don't know, a big number, maybe even more. And uh, Bert Goldman, he's described as the American monk. He met Jose Silva in 1975 while a hypnotherapist, and since then he's done amazing stuff. You can learn more about him at goldmanmethod.com. So let's check out a few of the quotes from the sidebar, and then we'll wrap this one up. Quote, unremitting happiness, of course, is not a possible or desirable state. According to the principle of rhythm, there is always an inflow and an outflow, an ebb tide and a flood tide. You'll always have highs and lows. There's no way to avoid that. However, your highs will be higher and your lows will be higher. And you'll find that what is a depressive state for you might be a moderately happy state for someone unaware of the five rules of happiness. Super cool concept there. Next quote, he didn't like it, he couldn't avoid it, it was there, and he couldn't change it. That left him with the choice of being happy or unhappy about the experience. When you have high self-esteem, you are in competition with the only person it makes sense to compete with, yourself. Life then becomes a game. And all the things in life that were bothersome become challenges and part of the game. When you understand the mechanism of the mind, you can control your life better. To deal with fear, go to your meditative level. Polarize the fear. Visualize the positive expectations. What would you be doing if you did not have the fear? Go over this again and again. Therefore, fear and faith are the same, differing only by degree of positiveness or the degree of negativeness. Change the degree and you change the emotion. You might initially think courage, not faith, is the opposite of fear. But consider that courage exists only where there is fear to be overcome. Without fear, there can be no courage. You would just act. As with any endeavor, you will improve as you practice. Improvement in this case means that ultimately you will simply close your eyes, take a deep breath, and be at alpha level. The basic difference between visualization and daydreaming is that the former is consciously creative and the latter is recreational. And finally, there is no way to get dark out of a room other than to let light in. The only way to get stress out of your being is to let in relaxation. You cannot be relaxed and stressful at the same time. Well, that was a quick look at some of the great big ideas from the Silva Mind Control Method of Mental Dynamics. We looked at your brain waves, fear and excitement, the seven hermetic laws, and the five rules of happiness. Really hope you enjoyed really good stuff. I hope you think some more about brain waves and how you can learn to control your brain waves and to get into alpha and into theta state. Um, yeah, so much more we can talk about there and we will in the future. In the meantime, I trust you're doing great and look forward to sharing more. Have a great day. We hope you enjoyed this Philosopher's Note please go to www.philosophersnotes.com to download more.